How's it going, everybody? This is Kevin Kring with College Golf Local, and I am so excited to be doing our second series titled Unique, um, stories from friends of mine who have uh, played golf in college and I just believe have kind of unique stories, anything from the way they were recruited, what college looked like for them, and anything in between. So it is my honor to bring on one of my, one of my best friends, Tom Gempel, who played at University of Colorado with me. He was a senior when I was a freshman, and even though I graduated eight years ago, we've certainly stayed in touch. And uh, Tom, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me this morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well, brother. Happy to, uh, happy to be on and spend a little time with you this morning and talk about college golf. So let's do it. Awesome. Well, what the kind of the, the point of this series is just to let people know um, college golf local is basically to educate kids and their families, um, specifically in Southwest Missouri, just about what it takes to be recruited. Um, you know, not every single person is destined to play Division One golf, but even if you play at lower levels, that's an amazing opportunity. And I just want people to understand kind of what it takes to get to that place. So I'll just kind of tee it up for you and just tell me kind of what was the, pro what, what, what kind of happened in your life that led you to start playing golf competitively? Um, you know, when did you realize you wanted to play golf in college and then being recruited? Uh, just kind of walk me through those kind of initial stages of your career. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, I think my entry into the game was pretty organic and not too dissimilar from a lot of other guys. My dad's a golfer and fairly avid, a single digit, and loves to play. And he kind of just, you know, when I was a kid, he used to bring me with him to the course. And it just happened really naturally. I had a love for it. I enjoyed playing. Um, and just in general, my family is really competitive by nature. So to kind of meld the two together just seemed super natural. and. Uh, it was kind of a no-brainer, really. It was like two of my favorite things in the world to do. So let's let's match them up and and get after it. So um, I probably play started playing tournament golf when I was about 12, 13 years old, probably. So you know, a middle schooler really, and um, just local, you know, Colorado Junior Golf events. Nothing crazy. I wasn't traveling across the country or doing anything like that yet, and. Uh, just kind of turned out that, you know, relative to other kids my age, uh, you know, I was shooting some decent scores and having some solid results. So I think that kind of plays into it too, you know, something that you enjoy doing and then you start having a little success, you know, makes it more fun. You want to keep doing it. Um, so, uh, you know, then going into high school, uh, started again, you know, had some, had some more success in the high school level and started to play it a little bit more on the regional and national level at that point and uh, had some good results. And it just seemed kind of like a natural progression to then want to take the next step and see if I could play in college. So, uh, and beyond that, you know, um, obviously hopeful for a scholarship on some level to help fund going to college. And uh, that may have been, you know, I don't know that any, that's any kid's like idea or dream necessarily that like, idea kind of gets planted in your head by your parents. It seems like they're kind of like, well, it'd be sweet if, uh, you know, we don't have to shell out tens of thousands of dollars every year to uh, send our kid to school. So, um, yeah, so it was probably, I would say, you know, sophomore, junior year in high school, I started uh, realistically thinking like, yeah, like I could, you know, I'm, I'm having a little bit of success uh, kind of at the state level and even starting to see some success at the regional and national level. I'm sure there's a place that I could play, you know, not knowing, right. you know, being a little naive, not really being that familiar with the process. I didn't know what that looked like. So it was probably that point in time I started to try and do essentially what you're doing right now for, for a lot of people and ask around and figure out how the process works. Um, what was that? What was that like? Yeah. Did you, did you kind of like find somebody who was like, gave you specific guidance? Did you just kind of try to just mesh something together? Do you remember kind of what it was like? Did coaches come to you or did you have to kind of reach out to coaches to get contacts and communication going? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I think, I think it's super important. Probably some of the best advice that I could give somebody looking to play college golf is you got to be really proactive. Um, and really, I think, you know, unless you're one of, you know, the six or 10 AJGA all American type players, I think you really got to be active in making first contact with coaches. Um, 
so I was fortunate. My high school team was pretty successful here in the state and had uh, probably two or three players that were like seniors or upperclassmen on the team when I was still an underclassman that went on to play college golf. Um, two of them kind of at the, you know, division two junior college level. And then one of them uh, was a really good player. He was in the class, uh, class before me, who I know you have a little bit of familiarity with Matt Bordis, uh, went on to play at Arkansas and then at Texas. And so I kind of, you know, borrowed and stole from him a little bit. And I was that, you know, annoying kid that wanted to basically do what he did because he was a little bit better than me and a little bit older than me. So um, that's probably how I got started. I mean, I know back when I was, you know, that age, I'm not sure how much of a big deal it is now, but Ping like put out a college golf guide every year. Uh, I don't, you know, it was in print. Everything's electronic now. I don't, I don't know if they're still doing it, but uh, yeah, it literally had like a list of contacts for like every coach in the country. And like I said, being naive at that point, I'm like looking at Georgia tech and Arizona state and these real blue chip programs, you know, dreaming of, of stardom and, you know, just the sexy, yeah. sexy schools and the sexy. Picks, did you, did so. you reach out to those schools and were like told thanks, but no thanks. Or did you just kind of let that be like, Oh, that'd be cool. Maybe one day they'll reach out to me. Definitely. So what I did was I honestly, you know, I picked literally like 150 or 200 schools. It was a lot. And uh, I remember listening to your, one, of your, one of your previous interviews with Coach McGraw from Baylor, and you guys were talking about casting a wide net. And so that's kind of what I did initially was I sent out, you know, a cover letter, resume, um, and kind of a schedule to literally like 200 coaches, 200 schools that I thought I would have any remote interest in playing for their school i gotta say that might be the why that might be the widest net i've heard of so far so yeah totally uh (laughs) yeah the you know the postage was a couple hundred bucks i think or whatever but (laughs) you need that scholarship to make up for that (laughs) totally right uh so you know i heard back from maybe a half or a third of those people either through written correspondence or emails and you know so then the pool got a little bit smaller from there um, and then, you know, at that point, you know, there's some pretty specific rules, I think, at, on who can contact who, meaning, you know, when can the coach contact you versus when you can contact them. And really, right. I think the way I understand it is you, you're pretty much free to reach out to them um, anytime you want. And that's, the, I think, probably the key in the whole process is being really proactive on your end and uh, as a player and making continual contact because I know coaches are kind of hamstrung a little bit from that perspective to where there's really specific right. times and dates that they can initiate. Right. So tell me you. what, what, what kind of, what did it look like for you to take from this really wide net to not even just get it really narrowed down, but then make your decision with where you went to, what was kind of the, totally. you know, the, the, the short story of that kind of condensing and happening? There? Yep. Well, so I would say I'd probably preface that by saying, and, and you realize this, hence the name of the series is unique, I think you said, right? I mean, each each person, each player's circumstance is going to be completely unique to the, themselves. I mean, uh, so for me, um, essentially what happened is I, you know, I ultimately kind of made the decision I wanted to not necessarily stay in state, but definitely stay closer to home. Um, so geographically kind of narrowed it down from there to some, you know, some States kind of here and, um, in the region, I'm, I'm in Denver, Colorado. So, you know, I was looking at like New Mexico, New Mexico state, um, some California schools, the Colorado schools a little bit. And, uh, ultimately I just had a really cool opportunity pop up at university of Northern Colorado, um, where the head coach at the time was Wally Goodwin, who, in college golf uh, circles is fairly well known from his days coaching at the university of Stanford where he, you know, he coached several really high caliber players. One of which I know everybody has heard of uh, being Tiger Woods. So as a 17 year old 
high school kid getting a call from a coach like that basically just carries a lot of cachet. And as soon as I kind of heard from them, I was, uh, I was in, you know, he, he had me kind of hook, line and sinker. Um, and I was just really excited to, to draw from his knowledge and experience and, um, yeah. So, so, I mean, so tell me yeah, Northern Colorado is, you know, a little bit smaller of a school. Did you pick yeah. Northern Colorado over some possibly bigger division one, you know, power five type schools? I did. Yeah. So not necessarily uh power five, but definitely like some schools like New Mexico, um, Santa Clara, uh, some schools like that. So I guess you would consider them mid majors, but definitely power yeah. five school or, uh, excuse me, division one schools. And, um, Northern Colorado was kind of in a, in a unique situation at the time. They had just begun to transition uh, to Division One from Division Two, mm-hmm. which is kind of how Wally ultimately came on board. He had been retired for a couple seasons from Stanford uh, and was a rancher up in Wyoming at this point and had some ties. I think he had even attended Northern Colorado, like, you know, back in the day, like we're talking like in the fifties. And he agreed to essentially help them build and launch their program and uh, hopefully turn it into, you know, a somewhat successful division one program. So. Right now. So tell me, you know, you, I know you, I know you end up at Northern Colorado, um, you know, kind of, if you can just briefly kind of summarize your first couple of years there and then what it, what, what things looked like for you, from there basically yeah definitely so you know I think uh obviously it's a completely new experience being a college freshman I mean it's exhilarating and you know I don't know if scary is the right word but it can be intimidating a little bit it's just new right so you don't know what to expect um I didn't know any of the guys on the team really at this point you know you don't really know how good they are etc so I was just, you know, when I got there, I would say excitement is probably the uh, the word that I would use to describe it all. It's a little bit overwhelming just in that everything you're doing is new. Uh, you know, you're, you're much more independent at that point. You're responsible for your own time and managing your own time. And granted, you do have resources at your disposal, but um, it's definitely, it's definitely just a, you know, another step up in terms of right maturity and discipline etc so i think yeah. i kind of lost your question there a little bit but it's okay i was just what, what was the, like the first couple of years because i know you know you didn't yeah. finish your career at northern right. colorado so what was that kind right. of what <clears throat> led to the transition and you know how did you make your choice on where to you know go to school next that sort of thing totally thanks um so like I said, so Northern Colorado was transitioning to Division One, and essentially because of Wally, they actually were able to compete in some relatively big tournaments given that they're completely new to the scene in, in Division One. So, um, you know, my first year there, it probably took me the first two or three events uh, or halfway maybe through the fall season to, to even crack the the top five traveling team. Um, but then once I did, I was pretty, you know, pretty, a pretty regular traveling member uh, with a few exceptions and ultimately just got better and better over my two years that I spent there. So, you know, I'd say my first season there was very unremarkable. Um, I was, you know, ultimately probably the fifth best player on the team and, you know, a very, mediocre to below average scoring average, I would say for like a division one player. However, it was probably my second season for some reason, you know, I just kind of started to blossom a little bit and ultimately through Wally's coaching and being surrounded by better players and having had the opportunity to at least play in several events, my freshman year, I think is what led to that. So uh, as a sophomore, we we actually played a little bit of a blended schedule, being that we were new to Division One. So we played in a few like Division Two uh, tournaments in the region, and then also played in 
you know, a, a, a full mix of division right, one tournaments. Yeah. So I was able to actually, you know, I, I played well in some of those events, had some good finishes, won a couple of smaller tournaments. And then I think I want to say like at the prestige, I had a top 20 and then, a, and then at Stanford, a top 10 and ultimately beat some guys, you know, some really good players. And that kind of what really boosted my confidence level, but then also kind of got me thinking about, and it wasn't that I was like looking to leave necessarily, but looking ahead um, at the type of schedule we were playing, having it be a little bit of a mix, a little bit of a smaller school with a, you know, just frankly, not quite the resources. I was at that point really interested in trying to test my game against better players and play bigger tournaments and more tournaments. Um, and that's kind of what led me to start feeling around to see, you know, uh, if there was an opportunity for me at another school, essentially. And of course, I should say, you know, I didn't, be I didn't even begin that process without first consulting with Wally and having his blessing. Uh, I think that's really important. Anybody that is looking to travel just to do it, or excuse me, transfer to do it on the up and up and not kind of leave your coach hanging because, you know, they've invested in you as much as you've invested in them. And it's, it's important to remember that. Right. And, you know, I can, I can say, you know, you ended up transferring to university of Colorado and that's where we became teammates and, and friends and all that sort right. of stuff. And I think it's one of the things that I'm certainly telling certain kids who maybe, you know, it's like they have dreams to play division one and they're like, Oh, I'm just, I'm just going to this Juco. I'm going to NAIA or division two, whatever. But that doesn't mean it's the end of your story. And that's why I want to bring you on because, right. you know, you went to a school that division one, but on a smaller scale and you had cool. an opportunity by playing, getting in tournaments and playing well. And you were able to then, like I said, you had other opportunities, but then you were able to transfer to like the school from your home state and have that opportunity to wear the, wear the Buffalo. So it's a pretty, like I said, that's, it's kind of why I wanted to bring you on because, you know, you, you got there and you worked hard and you became a good player and you were able to uh, kind of work your way. I don't know, not to work your way out of a situation, but you created more opportunities for yourself because like, you never, right. you know, you never just settled for where you were. So, like I said, that's one of those things I want to tell people. It's just because you go to a school doesn't mean that's necessarily the end of your story. You want to pick a school that you can picture yourself at, but, um, you know, other opportunities can come about too. Definitely. I just think it's, uh, you know, for anyone – looking to play college golf or that is ultimately dead set on college golf it's important to recognize and realize that while there are a vast amount of opportunities there are lots and lots of schools out there looking for players each individual team may only be bringing on say one or two guys every year uh, and it is extremely difficult to probably land your, you know, your dream school. I mean, the odds are honestly just slim. Um, so if playing, I think if playing college golf is something you really want to do, you de there's definitely a little bit of a give and take, um, you know, in, in where you play, you got to be, you got to keep an open mind and be willing to, you know, ultimately maybe not go to the school that you grew up dreaming of going to. Right. Absolutely. Um, I got one last question here and then I'll let you go, but just you yep. know, looking back on your time, is there anything you would go back to young Tom Gumpel and tell him maybe it's a, you know, start sending out this wide net earlier. Um, you know, not like a different school, but just like to make the process maybe easier for yourself or your family or, I don't know, anything like that that you would either tell, tell your, a younger version of yourself or you would tell a kid nowadays? Absolutely. I mean, I, I kind of said it already, but if I had to choose, you know, one piece of advice for a high school golfer looking to play college golf, it would be to be as proactive as you can possibly be and to start as early as you can in the process. You know, that being said, if, if you happen to be a junior, in high school or maybe even a senior for that matter, you know, all hope is not lost. Um, but you're definitely, you know, you are a little bit behind the curve. So, I mean, I would tell, you know, any, any freshman or sophomore in, in high school to, to reach out, start making contact, whether it's email, 
I mean, even just an email is probably, I would think maybe the best, the best form, you know, just, just to get yourself, get your name out there, get on a coach's radar that way they can, you know, just say, Hey, can I, you know, I'm interested in your program. You know, can I update you with my results, et cetera, over the next little while? And, and, you know, so they can start kind of building a, you know, a, a docket or a, you know, a yeah, file build their base you know. up. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that, like I said, that's, that's great. And that seems to be one of the things I've mostly heard is there, there are people who do maybe end up at a smaller school or something like that. And the main thing they say is they just wish they would have started earlier. And, you know, I think it's one thing to hear it from me as a guy with college golf local, but hearing from people who actually go have been through the process, hearing from coaches, hearing from other players and stuff like that. Um, I think that's how it finally starts to sink in that like whenever we say, Hey, start this process, like your freshman year, um, even if you're not even sure if playing in college is necessarily what you're going to ultimately want, you're better off starting it and then being like, okay, it kind of fizzled than waiting and then having it be something you really, really want when you're a senior. And then the options are, are limited. So that seems to be the number one thing I keep hearing from people over and over again. I couldn't agree more. You know, I mean, I think it seems uh, probably daunting a little bit, maybe to a high school freshman or sophomore to say, you know, to look that far in the future and say, Hey, this is something I really want to do. I'm committing to this. And, um, and you're not, like you said, you're not necessarily doing that, but to open that door sooner rather than later is you know, it's, it's not going to do anything but help you as a prospective student athlete. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Tom, thank you for joining me this morning. I, uh, I certainly hope that we're able to get out there and see each other playing some tournaments together soon. Um, crossing our fingers that we got about a month left, but we'll see. No doubt, buddy. I, uh, I'm happy to be on, you know, thanks for, thanks for having me and it's, uh, it's good to see you. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully it'll be in person the next time around yeah absolutely well hey all the best to uh all the best to fam stay healthy and we will uh see you soon likewise all right man cheers see you